So remember when that, on number five, practice problem number five, what we did was we had to go through and uh, compute the atomic mass of aluminum dichromate in kilograms. Maybe we'll just start with that one again, even though technically we've done it. I don't keep us from getting through the rest of the practice problem in the quiz. But the aluminum dichromate, it's Al2, Cr207 sub, was it two? Three, it's two and three, that's right. Because aluminum has a, as the cation, it has a plus three charge, and dichromate has a negative two charge, and that's where we get, you know, we do the, are you winking at him or her? It looked like he was winking at you. Hmm. Okay, you guys worked it out on your own time. <laughs> Aluminum dye. Okay. So we needed to compute the mass of this molecule in kilograms. So it's, it's a multi-step process, right? What are we going to do first? Do you remember? To get this in kilograms, we're going to first figure out <laughs> What's the mass in AMUs? So we'll get the mass in AMUs. And how do I get the mass of this molecule in AMUs? To the mass of aluminum dichromate, the whole molecule is equal to the sum of the masses of the parts, right? So I need to add up what is the mass of the aluminum that I have. How many aluminums do I have? I have two of them. What's the mass of one aluminum? Well, then I get that from the periodic table. So the periodic table over here tells me that aluminum on this one is at 26.98, so it's probably 27.0 in your, on your table. So 27.0 per aluminum atom, and I need two of them. So two times 27 plus the mass of chromium times two, plus the mass of oxygen times seven. But remember, there's three of this molecule, so we're gonna actually need six chromiums and 21 oxygens, right? If I ask you how many aluminums are in this molecule, you would say two. How many chromiums are in this molecule? Hopefully you say six, and oxygen, you would say 21. So I need two times the mass of aluminum plus six times the mass of chromium plus 21 times the mass of oxygen. Add those together, 702 AMU. <clears throat> well, so what is the mass of aluminum dichromate of the molecule? Well, a legitimate answer would be 702 AMU. So the mass of the molecule in AMU is 702.0 AMU. The question says, what is the mass of the molecule in kilograms? Oh. Right, so we do have a statement of equality that will be provided to you that 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams all the time. So again, it will be provided to you, but you should be able to use it and know that that's where you're going. I can convert AMUs to grams by using that factor. So 702 AMU times a conversion factor of 1 AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. Okay. So when I do this math, I'm not going to do the math here, but I do the math, my units are going to be AMUs cancels AMUs, and I'm left with grams. So my, it's going to be my mass of that molecule in grams. That's going to be your strategy for finding the mass of any molecule in something other than AMUs. It's going to, first of all, probably going to go through a conversion to grams. And this is how you do that. AMU times 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th is going to give you the mass converted into units of grams. Then from there, it said not that it wanted it in grams, but it wanted it in kilograms. So we have an answer that's legitimate in grams, but now we need to convert that so the kilogram, so we take that answer, multiply it by 1 1,000th, or 1,000 grams is equivalent to 1 kilogram, another statement of equality, right? So it becomes a conversion factor. 
do the math there, and that will give us the mass of the molecule in kilograms. So whatever the mass of whatever molecule it is, basically this is going to be the process to convert it to kilograms. Take the AMUs, multiply by 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th, that will convert it from AMUs to grams. Then it convert your grams into whatever unit they've asked you to do. Grams is the base unit. So whatever actual unit they've asked it for, you've got to convert by using a statement of equality here. A thousand grams is equivalent to one kilogram. <laughs> As you can note on the top of the practice problem, so the two statements of equality that you need to know how to use, but you don't need to have memorized, but you need to know how to use is that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the negative, or excuse me, times 10 to the 23rd of whatever you're, whatever you're looking at. It's a unit of counting. So if I need a mole of, again, mole of zebras, then I need 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd zebras. Because it's just Avogadro's number, correct. It's just a unit of counting. So that's how many you need. And then the other one is the conversion factor of 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Avogadro's number is, yeah, if I just said in a, in a class, if I said multiply this by Avogadro's number, that would replace me saying multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. They're the same thing. No. It's negative 24th grams. Avogadro's number is times 10 to the 23rd. It's positive 23. Remember, it's a lot. It's, it's many, 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 many things. This is taking an AMU and converting to grams. It's much smaller than one gram. It's incredibly one trillionth of one trillionth, you know, kind of a thing. So it's a very, very small unit of mass. It's going to be even smaller kilograms because I'm dividing by a thousand here. You know, if you were advanced math, you could go, okay, this is times 10 to the negative 24th. I could actually just make it times 10 to the negative 27th, and it'll take care of my conversion. But I don't expect you to do that in your head. I'd rather see the work to show me how you converted. But if you were to put times 10 to the negative 27, we would change your units. Your units wouldn't technically be correct anymore. But in your mind, you're thinking, okay, I'm multiplying by times 10 to the negative 24th, and then I've got to divide that again by a factor of times 10 to the third. The final answer is 1.17. So it's taking a molecule and determining the mass in three different units, AMUs, grams, and kilograms. Yes, ma'am. How do you know if the exponents are going to go up ah. or down? Because I'm not going to talk about that, like the middle part when it converts to grams. Then, then when you move it to here, how do you know if it goes up or down? No, how do you know if it goes up or down, moving from that way to that way? From here to here. Yeah, okay, so here we've got a, a number that's greater than 1 times a number that's greater than 1. When they multiply together, if they're greater than 10, your, your exponent's going to become smaller. Because when you write it in scientific notation, you know, you've got something greater than 1 times something greater than 1. That's where you're going to see that the exponent's going to become smaller because your number's become bigger. When I say smaller, it means in terms of less negative. It, it, it's going to look like it's getting smaller. Remember, you're talking negative, though. The exponent's actually getting bigger when it goes from negative 24 to negative 23 to negative 22. In our mind, we tend to think of that as getting bigger or, or you know, getting smaller because the number is getting smaller, but it's less negative, which means it's actually getting bigger. So, so conversion from a, from a molecule into units of mass in AMU, grams, and in this case, kilograms. Hopefully, once you get it to grams, you can go to any kind of metric conversion. Then. And if you were to ask in some other unit, like an imperial unit, a US unit, for, for mass, which is actually force, then we would have some other conversion factor for that. Remember, first unit, we talked about slugs, things like that. We haven't handled slugs. 
Now we're talking about moles, it seems appropriate to talk about slugs, right? Anyway. Number six. How many moles of, are we, are we good to go on then to, to number six? How many moles of gold atoms are in 2.56 kilograms of gold? I know that that's gold because it's not AG. It would make sense that AG is gold, but that's silver. So this is not AG, therefore it's gold. If you would have to know that it's gold or silver, all you need to know is what? Where to look for that symbol on the periodic table, right? So the question is, how many moles of gold? You've got a mass is equal to how many moles of gold? What piece of information are we likely going to need? It's mass. Okay, it's because we have a mass unit over here, right? And somehow we're going to move from a mass to a count unit. But we're going to have to have something that relates those things. Right? Something related to moles, right? Avogadro's number. So let's find a piece of information about the mass of gold. Well, again, because of the unit we're in, hopefully it'll drive you to the periodic table. Um, we look for gold. There's silver, gold's right below it. Both over here, 1B, column 1B, elements. You've got silver and gold. And it says here that gold has a mass of 196.96, so it's probably 197 <coughs> in your book. Let me see what they did in the, the key. They use 197. So the mass of gold is equal to 197.0. AMU, okay. And remember, that's 197.0 AMUs per atom. I'll write it like this, as a per atom. It's also equal to 197.0 grams per mole, okay? Remember, that's where we pull off the periodic table. It's atomic mass. This atomic mass in AMUs is the mass of one atom of that element. And the same number with a different unit in grams is how many <coughs> grams are in one mole of that. Which becomes important because now we've got mass, <coughs> mass, mass, moles, moles. We have something right here that's going to provide us a statement of equality that we can create a conversion factor from. Because I know right here that 197.0 grams of gold is the same as one mole of gold. When I say the same as, I use the equal sign. Realize they're two different things. This is a mass, this is a count, but they're equivalent. One replaces the other. There's an equivalency there. Okay, so when I have one mole, I have 197 grams. When I have 197 grams, I have one mole. So whatever fraction of that I have, or multiple of that, so to give me my conversion factor. So we start with what we know. We know we have 256 kilograms of gold. 256, or 2.56, excuse me. 2.56 kilograms of gold. Let's march across. We hope to end with moles on top. So I'm converting from kilograms. What's probably, what's our next step in this conversion, do you think? Would you multiply We're not going to. Eat. We're not, we're not going to need to in this one. We just need the concept of mole. This doesn't say how many pieces, how many atoms do we have, or how many molecules. It just says 
you know, how many moles do we have? So what's, we've got something that relates, gram, relates to moles and mass, right? It's in grams per mole. We know we've got to get some relationship of grams to mole up here on the board. So let's drive in that direction. Right here we have a mass of kilograms. What I would suggest now is we can't relate directly kilograms and moles, but we can relate grams and moles. So let's get it into grams. So kilograms, let's convert that to grams, and we would do that by having one kilogram over 1,000 grams, right? So it's 2,560. Right, 2,560 grams. And then you divide that by. So it's next step. Okay. So by doing it this way, we're writing out the long, we've got kilograms here. We're converting kilograms to grams in this step here. Again, hopefully you all see that. We've, all we've done is taking whatever this is and changed it from the language of kilograms into the language of grams. And as Will said, this would be 2,560.0 grams at this point. So now we're talking grams. Kilograms cancels kilograms. We're left with grams. And now we need to convert from grams to moles. But we have the statement of quality here. 197.0 grams is equivalent to one mole. <laughs> so I want to end with moles. I've got to get rid of grams. So and I have that right there. So 197.0 of those, grams of those, is equal to one mole of those. So kilograms cancels kilograms, grams cancels grams, and I'm left with moles. My answer is going to be in moles, and I'm asked for moles. So I know the setup is right. Then I'm going to go through and do the math. So we'll end up with 2,560 divided by 197.0, and they suggest that the answer then is 13.0. So when I have a sample of 2.56 kilograms of gold, I also simultaneously have 13.0 moles of gold. And then from that number, we could take Avogadro's number and multiply it out to figure out how many atoms of gold we have. Because at 13 moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole, so 13 moles would be 13 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, 78.12 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. So again, process though. We have a mass. We find on the periodic table the mass of the individual element in AMU. Recognize that an AMU per atom is the same as a grams per mole, same number, different units. Then use that as a conversion factor to move from what we're given to what we're asked. I know it's always easier when you see it. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of maybe difficult right now because at this particular moment, it makes sense to you. It may not five minutes from now, I understand that, okay? But for right now, it makes sense of, okay, I see it. Are there still any questions? I want to encourage you that there's a, there's a process behind these. Working on your own problems, looking at the example problems, doing the re review questions, practice problems, and expert practice problems. There's a pattern and a process. There are going to be times when you sit down and you know the process you're going to do before you finish reading the sentence. There's not a lot of variety in how to ask these questions. Okay. Having a mass, converting it to moles. Having a mass, converting it to the count. You've got to go through moles. Once you have moles, then multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. There's only so many different options. Could we use notes? That's a possibility, but I'm not going to let anybody assume that they can. It's better for you to assume that you can't and then maybe be blessed and find out you can't. Who's asking about notes, open notes, things like that. But the process, again, we're, we're coming up the end of the second week. And if you work diligently in your groups and you did the reading in advance and you work these problems, you should be almost falling into the motor memory of the process at this point. Oh, here's a mass. I'm looking for how many moles. I've got to get from, use something that relates mass to moles. Boom, it's right here. How do I get that from here? Where do we get that from the periodic table?
then we can do the same kind of problem with a molecule, because again, rather than looking up the individual atom mass in AMU, we look up the mass of each element in the, in the molecule, multiply it by its count in the molecule, and come up with the overall mass of the entire molecule, and then do the same exact thing. From there, I've got the process is exactly the same. And so for those of you that are comfortable with the math portion, this is very mathy, right? So if you've got a math brain, this is it's like, OK, I can do this. <coughs> if you're not math oriented, this might be a little more challenging. Then, like, if, you're, if you tend not to be math oriented, you probably find out that the review questions are a lot easier for you than the practice problems. And you're like, give me review questions all day long. Let me answer in short answers, sentences. I'll do that forever, Mr. Baker. Please don't make me do the math. Sorry. There's, <laughs> There's that's a component of this. It's very important. Okay. For others, you may have the motor memory of I'm going to drop down, I'll write down the equalities. I'm going to actually start to frame my my uh, multiple step math process. Hopefully, that's coming from a base of understanding the concept behind it. So, if you're more the big picture concept person, but not a math person, you know this is hard for the math people. Make sure you're following the right process. You could very well find yourself deep, deep, deep into a multi-step process and then realize, wait a minute, I didn't need to do any of that math. <laughs> I just need to read it from the periodic table. That's what tends to happen with the math folks. They'll start drilling really, really deep and not need to. Or sometimes you get partial credit and say, I don't know what, the, what I'm supposed to do here. Let me, just, let me just regurgitate everything I know about anything that's mathematical from this chapter and kind of just pour it all into the section. Well, that might show a lot of memorization for what happened in the chapter, but it doesn't show the application and the synthesis of any of that information. So, you know, there's might be a couple points, but that's not where more is better. That's just showing me you really don't know where to go. But you memorize a bunch of formulas. In, in our case, we really don't have that many formulas per chapter. There's only a couple formulas. There's a couple things you need to know. We're still going to give you what the conversion factors for MAMUs to grams and moles to atoms, but now you need to know how to use them. And hopefully, if you saw in your paper now, anytime you see something that says this equals this, in your mind, you're going, I've got a conversion factor. I can take that statement of equality, and I can build it this way, or I can build it this way, and I can use it to translate from one thing to something else. I can translate it to whatever I put in the top. And that basic skill is from chapter one. And we're just using that almost every module now. This is a good, this is a necessary foundation for chapter eight, which is stoichiometry. And as I said before, stoichiometry is chemistry. It is really, we finally get to, we now know the language, and we can actually start to do chemistry. So the next mean, module. So we haven't even started chemistry yet. No, but the, the way I, I tend to use it is, is like this, that when you're in martial arts, for example, people are working really hard when they're you know, white belt and yellow tip and gold belt and green belt and blue belt and brown belt, and they work for all these different stages and all these belt things and everything, and then one day, they eventually become a black belt. What they don't understand is when they finally become a black belt, that their instructor will tell them that now they can begin to learn the martial art, whatever they're studying. Now that they're black belt, they're finally capable and competent to learn. But you're not really ready to learn until you have mastered a lot of the fundamentals. And in much the same way, modules one through seven are preparing you for module eight. You can't do module eight with one through seven. One through seven set aside is not truly chemistry. Chapter eight, now we start, poof, everything coalesces together. Now we're doing chemistry. So this is what you've been learning is the language of chemistry. Chapter eight, arguably, is beginning of chemistry. Because of, and hopefully you're sitting here sometimes looking at the stuff that's on the border in the books and you're going, I actually have an idea, a clue what they're talking about. When we started this class, Electrons, protons, neutrons, how many nucleus, what? And I know you learned it before in general science, but it was just, okay, how long has it been since you've heard those terms, and now what do you do with them? You've had a good sense now of how these things are valuable and appropriate for use in actual chemistry type orientation. You can actually do something chemistry-wise with them. Next module, you're gonna start saying, whoa, wait a minute, because I know this, I can figure out all this stuff? Yeah, you have a balanced direction equation, you can, you can compute and estimate and experiment and validate all kinds of cool stuff. But until now, you haven't had the language to even do that. Again, the principle behind arrival. Right, Austin? 
just about Arrival? Yeah. The movie Arrival, remember we talked about that? Yeah. About you can't really even begin to communicate until you have a common language. This is our common language that we've been learning. I know. You guys are working me right out of the quiz. It's not going to go away. We do have to finish these, and we do. I do want to have at least a quiz before we, we take the module exam, right? Right now I'm debating between Friday and Monday for the module exam. Let's press on with the practice problems. I can very easily give the quiz first thing tomorrow. Okay, I know there were three of you that weren't here yesterday. Uh, or two of you that are here now that weren't here yesterday. Yes, sir. Can I drink water? You may. But hopefully today, don't, and don't drop all today, okay? The, the quiz that I wrote doesn't include uh, many references to the next four problems, but if it's okay with you, I'll press on to the review. Tomorrow we'll take the quiz, and we'll just work through what you didn't understand on the quiz and decide whether the exam is going to be Friday or Monday. And we'll do that tomorrow. Do we still have to take the quiz? Take it tomorrow? Yeah. If we do it tomorrow, yeah. And all the concepts, all the concepts are building, so we've reviewed what you need for the quiz too. There's nothing that that we haven't covered. Okay, the next question, number seven, takes the same idea, but rather than an individual atom, it goes into a molecule. So as we've been talking about, number the next one is a molecule rather than individual. I'm going to cut some steps out of this just so we can make sure that we get through it. So I'm hypocarbonate. Hydrocarbonate. So it's NaHCO3. So I'm hydrocarbonate. How many moles of this molecule are in a 125 gram sample? So 125 grams is equivalent to how many moles? Okay. Hopefully you look at this and see, I need something that's going to take me from grams and moles. Right? We need to convert it from grams to moles. So somewhere along the line, something that looks like this, or something that looks like this is going to be necessary. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to need to translate from grams to moles or from moles to grams. Or vice versa, I said it backwards. From moles to grams or from grams to moles. And I'm going to need to do that somewhere because I'm given a mass and a mass for moles. I need something that's going to relate the mass to how many individual pieces that is. So the first thing we need to do, again, this is a common process. We have a certain number of grams here, right? I need something that's going to relate grams and moles for this thing. So the first thing I need to do is what? Find the mass of this molecule in AMU. And I'm going to do that by adding up the individual masses of the individual elements that make it up. So the building blocks that make it up. So one sodium, I need to have the mass of one sodium, one hydrogen, one carbon, and three oxygens. I need to add up the AMUs for each one of those to combine them to come up with the mass of the total molecule. Again, for brevity, I'll use the answer key. It comes out to be 84 AMU. So, one, I'll write it this way, one molecule of my compound, one molecule has a mass of 84.0 a M U. Right? Is that right? Yeah. 84.0 AMU. So one molecule has a mass of 84.0 AMU. Now we need to know a truism. It always is true. If I know the mass of one molecule in AMU, I also know the mass of one mole in grams. Because if I have this, I can then say, okay, one mole of that molecule 
is equal to 84.0 grams. So you need to look for this, and you need to know that this can be restated as this. That one molecule is 84.0 AMU, therefore one mole of that molecule is 84.0 grams. So we're given a mass, we need to end with moles, we're going to put together our equation starting with what we've been given, 125.0 grams, and remember if it helps you, put that over 1 to remember the fraction. You can always put anything over 1, you haven't changed anything. If I do anything by 1, it's the same, statement of identity. So 125.0 grams of, and I'm not going to write it just for time, but the molecule, 125.0 grams, and I need to go from grams to moles. Well, since I'm already in grams, it makes it pretty simple, right? I need to go to moles, so I, moles goes on the top, and grams on the bottom, and right here, one mole is 84.0 grams. And that's it. We weren't, we weren't converting to other units or anything like that. It's just straightforward at that point. So 125 divided by 84, the key says it's 1.49. So here, the thing that's being tested is not only do you know the basic relationship between mass and moles, but can you compute the mass of the molecule? And you may be given the molecule like this, or you may be given the chemical name of the molecule. So can you, given the name of the molecule, come up with a formula for the molecule, and then with the formula of the molecule, come up with the mass of the molecule, and then from the mass of the molecule, convert that into the number of moles of given a certain mass. Any questions on seven? Again, I know you're in the, I get it, <clears throat> maybe moment. Um, so note it up, if you don't, if you don't understand something now, Ask it, yes, sir. So, how, when do you have to like use Avogadro or something like? If I ask you how many molecules of this are in this mass, if I said 125 grams has how many molecules? Well, this would take me to moles, and then I could by Avogadro's number, yeah, pieces per mole, and that would give you how many individual molecules you have. So moles gives you the general counts, like dozen, you know, gives you a larger number. Okay, translate that into, into actual pieces. How many pieces do you have? Multiply by how many others are. You could be given the pieces. How many moles do you have? You need to divide by how many are. You know, if I said I've got a, a large, this is how many I have. How many moles is that? So you would have the pieces, you need to divide by Avogadro, that would translate it back into moles. Every time you use Avogadro, basically what you're saying is this statement of equality, one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pieces. Pieces could be atoms or pieces could be molecules. So that, that statement of equality we use as a conversion factor between moles and pieces. You won't have to memorize that, and you won't have to memorize AMUs to grams. Those, that state, those two statements of equality will give I would encourage you to, but I would also, if you do memorize them and start to use them when they're provided to you, always just check yourself. It's easy to forget the negative sign. Is it 10 to the 23rd or 10 to the negative 24th? Because those numbers are kind of close. And you might at times go 6.02 times 10 to the negative 24th. Oh, you would just incredibly change the number because you've gone from a huge count, something that's huge, to something that's infinitesimally small. And the numbers are going to be, the coefficients might be fine, but your scale is going to be way, way, incredibly off. I mean, it's, it's so far off, it's, you know, it's going from Ant-Man to the land of the giants. I mean, it's just completely different scale.
Number eight, what is the mass of copper two chloride sample if it contains 0.344 moles? Okay. First thing we need to do is figure out what's the formula for copper two chloride. All right? The fact that it's copper two chloride, what does the two mean? This is going back to the previous module. It's copper two chloride. Roman numeral two. Copper. Okay, so it's the charge of the metal that's in front of it, right? So copper two means the two is related to the copper. It tells me something about the copper. Copper is a metal. Metals want to become positively charged. This is telling me that this version of copper is taking on a plus two charge. Copper two. Copper two, plus two charge, chloride. Looking over at chlorine, it's ionic molecule, right? So you can't tell what it is. It's not dichloride, trichloride, it's just chloride. Well, how many is it? Copper two, plus two charge. Chloride has a negative one, so it's gotta be a CuCl2 molecule. Copper chloride. Copper chloride. Because the copper has a plus two charge, each chlorine has a negative one charge, so you need two of them to balance the two positive from here. So that's your copper two chloride. What's the mass of 0.344 moles of the compound? So we're going to go from, um, we need to go from, we were given, we're given 0. Correct, 0.344 moles of the compound, and we need to move that to mass. So many grams. So given moles, let's just let's just start writing our e equations out here. We've got moles that are given to us. Put that all over one times something that's going to be relates moles and grams. And I'll do that, and even if, if I can't find this thing, maybe I need to add a step. And so I'll raise my units and build it out. But if you see, if we have moles, and we've got something related to moles and grams, we're going to end up with grams. Right? And I have moles, and I want to end in grams. So I've got a hint that this is probably a good setup. I just need something that's going to relate grams and moles. Given copper 2 chloride, I can come up with a statement of equality of how many grams of this is how many moles of that, right? How do I do that? Well, I'm going to look at the mass of the molecule, copper and two chlorides. Come up with the mass of the molecule. In this case, the mass of the molecule is 134.5 grams per mole. Or another way of saying that is 100 and 34.5 grams is equal to one mole. Okay. So I've taken the AMUs of copper and two of the AMUs of chlorine, added them together. It came up to be 134.5 AMUs per molecule, and 134.5 AMUs per molecule becomes 134.5 grams per mole. So I have a number of moles, that's 0 0.344, and I've been asked to convert that into the language of grams. I can do that with this statement of equality right here. 134.5 grams is equivalent to one mole. And just do the math, and that'll tell me how many grams I have. The answer in the key is 46.3, and I did not intend to rhyme it, just in case you're curious. Okay. So it's 46.3 grams. So 0 0.344 moles is equivalent to 46.3 grams of copper two chloride. If I wanted to measure out 0 0.344 moles, which would mean that I have, you know, 1.9 times 10 to the 23rd individual atom or molecules of copper chloride, right? Off multiplying by Avogadro's number, right? This many moles times 6.02 times 10 to 23rd will tell me how many molecules I have. And if I wanted to have that many molecules, how could I do it? I could go to triple beam balance, measure out 46.3 grams. When I have 46.3 grams, I have 0.344 moles. When I have 0.344 moles, 
I have that times Avogadro's number of molecules of copper. So taking a mass we can measure and computing how many individual molecules we actually have in our sample. And that becomes important when we start relating in reactions. Proportions, one to one to two to three and so on, which is stoichiometry, which is chemistry. I'm sorry, I started to race early. Everybody have what they need? Any questions on number eight? Again, you're in that aura of, oh yeah, I got it, but do you? Any questions? Because if you're not in the aura of, oh yeah, I get this, if you're not there, you, you definitely should have questions. So this number nine, what would be using Avogadro's to sign how many molecules? Yeah, if it says how many molecules, that if you're getting into the pieces, Avogadro's going to come in somewhere. So number nine, how many molecules? How many molecules are in 457 grams of tungsten? Okay, you have a sample that's 457 grams of tungsten. You want to compute how many molecules that is. Again, either you know the process and you just immediately jump to the periodic table, figure that's going to come in someplace. Or let's think through the conversion factors we're going to need, and we know. If I have uh, grams that's given to me, and I need to get to molecules, right? If hopefully now you're in your mind going, I can't, but I don't have a way I can go from grams to molecules directly, but I do have a way I can go from grams to moles. And I do have a way that I can go from moles to count, right? So let's do that as a two-step process. Let's go from grams to moles, and then from moles to pieces. What is my conversion factor going to look that's going to take me to moles? I need something that's going to cancel grams and give me moles. Where am I going to find a grams to moles relationship? Atomic masses. Okay. That's going to give me my moles. But I'm not asked for moles, I'm asked for molecules. This is where we come up with what I just mentioned array. If we're going to move from moles to pieces, that's when Avogadro's number gets involved. Or if we go from pieces to moles, we divide by Avogadro's number. So here, how many molecules? Now we're going to end up with moles. And some way that that relates to, in this case, molecules. Well, I'm given 457, let me write it like that, a little lame, but 457 grams. And over here, this is a constant, we know this all the time, that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So what I'm lacking is this piece right here that relates moles to grams. I need something that relates moles of tungsten to grams of tungsten. I'm going to find that from the periodic table. We find tungsten, somebody help me out, where's tungsten? Right there, 74. So it's 183.85. 183.9. So 183.9 AMUs per atom is also 183.9 grams for every one mole. Okay. So this will take me from grams to moles, from moles to molecules. Book answer is 1.5 times 10 to the 24th. 1.50 actually. So there are 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of tungsten in a 457 gram sample of tungsten. <coughs> this I go from grams to moles from moles to molecules. This is your given. This is a given. This section here is mass to moles, which you get from the periodic table. You just need to put them in the right order. This 
a given constant. Okay? So convert your given into moles. Convert your moles into molecules with a given constant, and there's your answer. Let's do number 10 real quick. I know we have a couple minutes. Hang with me. The bell goes. It won't take long. Number 10. In the decomposition of 1.2 moles of dinitrogen pentaoxide, Dinitrogen pentaoxide. Okay? Hopefully you just you see that. Dinitrogen pentaoxide. In the decomposition of that, it, this comes out to be nitrogen and oxygen. Oxygens and nitrogens are both homonuclear diatomics, right? Okay, so here I've got nitrogen, oxygen, two, five, two, two. You multiply that over there by two and a half, don't I? Because two and a half will give me five. But now I have a fractional coefficient, so I need to multiply everything by two. This becomes two, this becomes two. Multiply two and a half by two, it becomes five. So my balanced decomposition reaction is two dinitro nitrogen pentaoxide becomes two nitrogen and five oxygen. Now the question is, in the decomposition of 1.2 moles, the 1.2 moles of this, how many moles of oxygen will be formed? How do I convert? If I know that 2 can produce 5, then how many does 1.2 produce? Hopefully you've seen here, you've got your statement of equality. Okay, I've got 1.2 moles of N2O5, right? And I'm asked for how many moles are produced of O2. And here's here's the here's the kicker over here for moles of N2O5. I need to relate the moles of my of my original molecule to the moles of that product. And your statement of equality, the language we've been using up to this point, is this. For every two moles here, it produces five moles over here. You see that? If I have two of this, I'm going to get five of this. And that becomes my statement of equality. I start with 1.2. This is how many I have. For every 1.2 that I have, how many are going to be produced? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I know that for every two moles of this, I produce five moles of that. So 1.2 times 2.5, and, and this gives me 3 moles. 3 moles of O2. Every time I decompose 1.2 moles of this, I produce 3 moles of this. How do I know? Because my statement of equality says for every 2 of these I decompose, I produce 5. They always produce in a proportion of 5 to 2. 5 to 2. I start with this. Relationship is five to two, and that gives me three. It's always going to be in that portion. So if I say I react 16 moles, what am I going to get? 40. How do you know? It's always going to be five to two. 